attitude, set climb power, and surprise, surprise. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magna Nordal, I'm an ATR captain and instructor. In our previous video, I showed what happens when an engine fails when the aircraft takes off. A system called the Automatic Takeoff Power Control System, ATPCS, assists the pilots in the event of an engine failure during takeoff. All takeoffs are made with 90% power. This reduces the temperature inside the engine, resulting in a longer engine life. The ATPCS is armed when power is set for takeoff. This is indicated with a green arm light on the engine panel. If the green arm light is not illuminated, the takeoff must be aborted. If an engine fails during takeoff, the ATPCS will increase the power of the other engine to 100%, and 2.15 seconds later, the propeller of the failed engine will feather which means the propeller blades will move into a position that creates minimum drag. We are cleared for takeoff and announce the power levers to the launch. ATPCS arm. Here's been alive. Power set. I have control. We want to rotate. So to climb here up. When uh, reaching acceleration altitude that is minimum 400 feet above the runway, the procedure is to apply the climb procedure. In ATR aircraft with the glass cockpit, we move the power management selector to climb. And this causes the following to happen. 1. The ATPCS is no longer armed. 2. NP or propeller RPM is reduced from 100% to 82%. 3. Engine torque is adjusted to climb power. And that means the torque will in fact increase a little bit, but don't let that fool you because power is the sum of torque multiplied with NP, so the power is reduced. 4. The FMS commands the target speed to increase to 170 knots. In aircraft without glass cockpit, the pilots must increase the target speed themselves. On a hot day with a high takeoff rate, the rate of climb is reduced and the aircraft is accelerating after climb procedure. With that in mind, I started to wonder what will happen if an engine fails at that moment when the speed is still low. The ATPCS will not protect you anymore and the aircraft has lost half the power, which is already reduced. And the aircraft is accelerating towards climb speed. And the propeller of the failed engine is windmilling, creating a lot of drag. It is evident that the aircraft will start to descend. The procedure for an engine failure in flight is to move the power lever to flight idle, then move the condition lever to feather and then fuel shut off. But will this be enough to prevent the aircraft from hitting the ground if you follow the flight director? You must remember that the pilots most likely will experience a startling effect because an engine failure is a very rare event. Two times a year we practice engine failure during takeoff in simulator because this is a critical exercise. But it's not mandatory to practice engine failure after climb procedure. Assuming the engine fails at 600 feet over the ground and that the autopilot is engaged the aircraft will start to descend after an engine failure. If the engine failure happens when you are flying an ATR with EFIS cockpit or glass cockpit standard 2, the flight path will be something like this. The pilots will most probably experience a startling effect for some seconds before they start to react. 
If they feather the propeller but do nothing else, I still have a feeling that the aircraft will continue to accelerate towards the ground. When I learned to fly, I learned the importance of aviate, navigate, communicate, in that order. Aviate means to fly the aircraft. I also learned the three P, power, performance, procedure. If there is something you need in this situation, it's power. When you look at the procedure for engine failure at takeoff, we will climb in maximum power and then level off at acceleration altitude. So when the engine fails after climb procedure, we are already above acceleration altitude. Personally, I recommend the following procedure. Set alt mode. Set MCT and if necessary, advance the power lever to the ramp. That gives 100% torque on the operating engine. Identify the failed engine. And take your time, don't rush. Then power lever to flight idle. Condition lever to feather, take a short break just to confirm it's the right one. Then fuel shut off. Then accelerate to flap speed. That's what we previously called Whiteberg or final takeoff speed. Set power lever to the notch, retract the flaps and set IAS mode. ATR 600 variants have glass cockpit, officially called new avionics suite. Since the introduction 10 years ago, we have seen many upgrades, mainly to the software. All early 600 variants are, to my knowledge, upgraded to standard 3.2 or 3.1. The main difference is that standard 3.1 has VNAV, vertical navigation, while standard 3.2 has not. Aircraft with standard 3.1 has a mode called low speed protection. It alerts you if you are flying too slow and will take over the pitch guidance. Aircraft with standard 3.2 does not have this mode. And if an engine fails after climb procedure, I recommend the procedure I mentioned before. Low speed protection is described in FCOM description chapter 22.6. The purpose is to prevent the aircraft speed from decreasing significantly below minimum operational speed, we mean OPS. And it will play an important role if you experience an engine failure shortly after climb procedure. A few days ago, I had a simulator for myself when the pilots had a break. The simulator is an ATR-72600 with standard 3.1 software. I selected an airport at sea level maximum takeoff weight, 23 tons, and 30 degrees Celsius, which is 15 degrees above standard. I switched the left multifunction display to become a PFD, so that you can see the flight instruments more easily on the video. Here is the engine panel, where the ATPCS light will illuminate. This is engine torque indication, it will be 90% at takeoff, MP is propeller speed or RPM, it will be 100%. This is the power management selector, it's in takeoff position. I will engage autopilot shortly after takeoff. The takeoff speeds and target speeds are set by the FMS. V1 and rotate are 113, and V2 plus 5 is 122. Acceleration altitude is 400 feet. I have programmed the simulator to fail engine number one at 600 feet. In the first test, I will not increase power or level off. And I will allow ample time for the startle effect, because uh, most pilots will be surprised when they experience an engine failure at this phase of flight. We are cleared for takeoff and advance the power levers to the notch. ATPCS arm. Speed alive, power set, seventy knots. I have control. We want to rotate. Also to climb, gear up. Autopilot on. Mm -hmm. 
Acceleration altitude. Power management is set to climb. ATP CS arm light extinguishes. 600 feet, engine long failure. Torque number one drops to zero. And P remains the same, which means the propeller is windmilling. The aircraft almost stops climbing and the airspeed starts to decrease. The FMS sets the target speed to 127 knots, which is V2 plus 10. An amber speed speed alert is triggered when the airspeed is 5 knots below the target speed. When VS reaches 0 feet per minute, the pitch mode changes to protection level. The aircraft will maintain level flight, but unless you take action, the aircraft might lose more speed and end up in a stall. After giving some time for the starting effect, I move the power lever to flight idle and the condition lever to feather and fuel shut off. NP goes to zero and we are not losing speed anymore. But the situation is still critical because we are accelerating very slow. We need more power. So let's do the same scenario but with more power. We are cleared for takeoff and advance the power levers to the notch. ATPCS arm, airspeed alive, power set. Seventy knots. We want rotate. Positive climb, gear up. Pilot on. Acceleration altitude. Power management to climb. Six hundred feet. Engine one failure. I give some time for the start effect. Then I set Alt mode and MCT. Power level flight idle, condition level fed the fuel shut off. And now you can see that the aircraft starts to accelerate. MCT gives 100% NP and 90.9% torque. If the aircraft is not able to maintain a safe speed, we have one more option, set the power lever to the ramp. This will give up to 100% torque. Power, performance, procedure. That should be all for this time. I hope you liked the video. But uh, just remember that this procedure is my recommendation and it's not endorsed by the manufacturer. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy landing.